I can't claim to be a, uh, uh, having any major expertise uh, in Africa at all. Many colleagues here are, are much more qualified, uh, but I do know something about China. And in the past few years, uh, I have primarily in the theme of energy, uh, China's quest, uh, global quest for energy uh, security. I think I've followed the Chinese behavior around the world. Uh, uh, it's multinational uh, uh, you know, uh, cooperations, expansion behavior in uh, Africa, in the Middle East, uh, in Latin America, and I found it uh, very interesting. So uh, it is, I think in that context, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, China and Africa. And uh, uh, I, I think by talking about this relationship or by understanding this decentering of the North in that context, uh, in globalization terms or in uh, strategic terms, I think we need to look at the broader context, the broader context of uh, where China is going internally. China's internal dynamics of reform or its own blend of free market capitalism plus political control uh, and, and social stability. Uh, I, I think we need to look at that Many seem to analyze Africa, China, U.S., China, Canada, China, Latin America, China relations purely from the bilateral context. I think that's not enough. Um, we need to look at this relationship and maybe broader significance in terms of the larger movement of globalization and where China and Africa fit into that uh, broader context. And I think finally, we need to look at probably also the uh, geopolitical uh, um, struggle between the major powers. Um, and that's the political strategic context if you say maybe the globalization is the uh, economic context. Um, so what I will do is probably looking through uh, the uh, bilateral relations China-Africa uh, through the lens of uh, Chinese quest you know, for energy and how it went into Africa, I think how that bilateral relations uh, have evolved and where it will go. Um, this, this, I think this topic is very important. Uh, uh, as you know, most of you probably uh, have heard that Chinese President Hu Jintao is now touring African continent, eight country, 12 days tour. And uh, with the second tour to Africa in one year, the third trip for him being the president of China, and the fifth trip, if you count him being the, on the senior political politburo level since the middle of 1990s. And that is on top of all the other prime ministers, different uh, other Chinese leadership's uh, visit to Africa. And uh, I think I can s safe to say no other major powers uh, in history actually have pulled this much energy and efforts into engaging so many developing countries in one particular continent in such a manner. We're looking at 48 out of 53 African countries sent their leaders, mostly head of the state, to Beijing last November for the China-Africa summit. Unprecedented kind of event. And we're looking at the most concentrated developing countries, most of them the least developing countries in the world in that continent. And China, why then? China is engaging with so much efforts, with so many efforts. We're looking at the blanket visits. You know, you look Hu Jintao, Premier Wen Jiabao, Foreign Minister Li, and all others, almost in the past few years. Most of those 48 Af African countries out of 53, which the other five had diplomatic relations with Taiwan, so all the 48 countries have been almost covered, almost by all the top leaders, and uh, in the past few years uh, uh, alone. And so I don't know what Melinda has special contact with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China. She scheduled last fall, this week, to have this seminar while Hu Jintao is in, uh, in Africa. This is uh, just something very, very interesting. So if you read all the comments uh, about Hu Jintao's visit, uh, if you click on all those hundreds of news stories, the receiving governments of those eight countries and others would come out to praise China 
friendship, economic development packages, trade, you know, uh, 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 and uh, a new partnership. Uh, and these are all wonderful kind of music to the ears of, you know, of the Chinese leaders, uh, very pleased. Uh, the critics would say China, what China is doing in Africa, really, for all these extensive efforts, is no more than a type of new colonialism. Okay? China is only interested in natural resources and energy in Africa. That's where it's seizing. They're popping up the repressive regimes in Sudan and Zimbabwe to prolong the humanitarian crisis. Um, basically, they're just going there for profits. And uh, they're just strategically relocating itself, trying to seize sphere of influence. And at the end of the day, all the Chinese trade, investment, and relations with African countries, because China's powerful position making individual poor and you know, less developed African individual states on the losing end. And the Chinese would counter argue that no, 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 this is a new type of you know, partnership. China shared all the past bitter experiences of colonialization with other countries. China would never do things like what the old colonial powers have done uh, to the African countries. They will have infrastructural development, they will have AIDS, they will have medical teams, they will have uh, you know, many, many localized AIDS events. So they argue that something is new, is emerging, and they are going to do something very different. You can see Hu Jintao giving a major speech at a, a South African university just a few days ago, laying out the Chinese vision. So, here you have a kind of a different uh, uh, type of argument. So let me, at uh, the background uh, in that context, let me go back to emphasize a, a number of things throughout my talk. One is that this relationship is really not that new. China may have redefined its contents with its current economic boom and the relations based on energy and resource extraction, but the relationship has been there for a long, long time, okay? And secondly, I think I want to look into how the Chinese domestic dynamics in terms of own development will actually have a bearing on this relationship uh, with the rest of the world, especially developing countries, including Africa. And in that part, I want to show you as a case study in the theme of China's search and hunger for, for energy, how in the global context, it almost logically will come to Africa as it is today in terms of defining its relationship uh, with that continent. And finally, just some thoughts. Uh, I think raise some questions at the theoretical level rather than making a theoretical analysis. China has, well, sorry, this is a kind of a Chinese newspaper thing, uh, but I have the latest. 40, almost from nowhere. Look at 1990, at $9 billion, uh, 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 up to 40 billion somewhere, uh, you know.